October 7, 2025. The European Space Agency releases imagery of 3i Atlas that shouldn't be possible from instruments designed for a completely different purpose. The photos aren't the mystery. The mystery is what stopped flowing from every other source the moment these images went public. Yesterday, the International uh, Asteroid Warning Organization uh, Network uh, decided to have a campaign starting mm. on November 27th until January 27th. An interstellar visitor is forcing scientists to choose between expanding physics or accepting we've been measuring the wrong variables. And the timing of when certain data streams paused raises questions even skeptics can't dismiss with conventional explanations. If you've wondered whether we're truly alone, what unfolds in the next few minutes will show you why even the most cautious researchers are reconsidering their assumptions about what moves through the space between stars. Yes, it will be a technological signature, but it could be also a mothership that releases mini-probes that maneuver. For months, NASA tracked 3i Atlas, Webb analyzed its spectral signature before it entered the inner system. Then the updates froze. The stated reason? Government operations paused. Yet ESA continued transmitting. China's instruments kept recording. Private observatories never stopped. Only one agency's pipeline went quiet. Well, um, we are still waiting for NASA to release uh, an image, the highest resolution image with 30 kilometers per pixel that was obtained on October 2nd by the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Pay attention to the next 20 seconds. You'll understand why absence of information can reveal more than any official statement. ESA didn't just release photos. They opened the raw telemetry, calibration files, orbital solutions, two Mars orbiters, ExoMars and Mars Express captured 3i Atlas crossing their field of view despite instruments built to study planetary atmospheres, not deep space objects. Engineers extended exposure times far beyond specifications, detecting something 100,000 times fainter than the Martian surface. What emerged? A luminous core wrapped in a haze that didn't scatter light like reflected solar radiation. It appeared self-luminous. One ESA mission specialist described it as light behavior patterns inconsistent with natural reflection models. Also, the light from it had a very unusual negative polarization. NASA's high-resolution orbital camera could have captured finer detail. The data transmission stopped mid-sequence. When astronomers plotted the approach vector, they anticipated disorder. Objects arriving from interstellar space should tumble in at chaotic angles, their trajectories warped by millions of years drifting through galactic forces. Instead, 3i Atlas arrived nearly parallel to the ecliptic plane, the geometric disk where planets orbit. Orbital inclination? 4.89 degrees. Statistical probability of this alignment occurring naturally, under 1%. The trajectory of this object is exactly aligned with a plane in which the planets orbit the Sun to within 5 degrees. That coincidence is 1 in 500. Neither Oumuamua nor Borisov exhibited this precision. Buried in the trajectory calculations is a sequence that probability theory says shouldn't emerge from random gravitational interactions. The alignment was merely the opening chapter. It passed within 18.6 million miles of Mars precisely when ESA's orbiters achieved optimal observation geometry. Weeks later, Venus positioned at the ideal angle for Earth-based instruments. Then Jupiter aligned for a potential gravitational deflection toward perihelion. One trajectory analyst called it surgical timing. For it to lie exactly in the plane, it means that along its path, it can come very close to several planets. In fact, it comes very close to Mars, Venus and Jupiter. Odds of this sequence occurring by chance? Less than 1 in 10,000. Picture launching a dart from another galaxy and threading it through a keyhole the diameter of a dinner plate. The object's characteristics defied established categories. Scientists estimated nucleus size between 320 meters and 5.6 kilometers, anywhere from a football stadium to a small mountain range. Despite venting material and releasing dust, it showed virtually no tumbling, no thrust-induced trajectory shifts typical of outgassing bodies. Mass calculations suggest 33 billion tons minimum. We get a mass of 33 billion tons. That's the minimum mass. The object needs to be more massive than that. Yet it accelerated in ways that mass distribution shouldn't permit. Hold on. What you're about to learn in the next 30 seconds contradicts the standard comet formation models taught in every astrophysics program. Polarimetric analysis revealed extreme negative polarization, 
minus 2.77% at 6 to 7 degree phase angles. No catalogued comet has ever produced this signature. It implies dust or ice grain geometries we've never encountered in natural objects, like discovering a snowflake with diamond's crystalline structure. Physically possible? Perhaps. Naturally occurring? Unknown. The chemistry violated more conventions. Spectroscopy identified abundant CO2 and water ice beyond six astronomical units from the Sun, far past where comets typically activate. The CO2 to water ratio measured 16 times higher than any studied comet. Iron, which should be omnipresent, was nearly absent. Dust grain behavior matched trans-Neptunian objects, not interstellar travelers. One researcher summarized, observationally, it resembles a comet. Dynamically, it behaves like engineered mass. And in this case, you know, we saw CO2, uh, carbon dioxide mostly, but we also saw nickel without iron and uh, cyanide. I mean, these things are not uh, often seen in, in, in the comets that uh, we, we know about. And Independent teams processing ESA's open source data discovered an additional correlation no one anticipated. When researchers traced the entry vector backward, one detail emerged. The trajectory originated from a region only 9 degrees from the 1977 Wellu signal source. In August 1977, Ohio's Big Ear Telescope detected a 72-second radio burst so anomalous that astronomer Jerry Amon annotated the printout with a single word, wow. On August 15th, uh, 1977, there was a very famous uh, uh, flare in the radio, radio signal, that was given the name the WOW signal because the observers that recorded it at Ohio State uh, University um, was uh, stunned at, at, at how powerful this signal was. <laughs> And I checked it, turns out that it uh, came from about the same direction in the sky as 3i Atlas. It arrived from Sagittarius at 1420 megahertz, the hydrogen frequency often called the universal marker for intentional communication, never repeated, never explained. For nearly five decades, it remained isolated. Now an interstellar object enters from nearly the same celestial coordinates. Webb and ESA instruments detected subtle variations near 1420 megahertz from 3i Atlas, not transmissions, fluctuations, coincidence or echo. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb proposed a framework shift. What if interstellar messages don't arrive as electromagnetic signals or coded sequences, but as physical objects, objects whose trajectories, timing, and anomalous properties constitute the message itself? If 3i Atlas represents such communication, its precision and behavior would be the syntax. Most people will miss what I'm about to reveal next, but if you're still here, you're about to understand why conventional explanations keep failing. A competing hypothesis emerged. Panspermia dispersal. Life spreading through natural distribution. Fragments, ice, dust carrying dormant microorganisms, or prebiotic chemistry between stellar systems. Analysis found significant organic carbon, methane, and complex hydrocarbons in 3i Atlas's spectrum, molecules requiring millions of years of cosmic ray exposure to synthesize. The object likely traveled for eons, preserving its chemical layers like a cryogenic archive. Its outgassing wasn't chaotic but rhythmic, dispersing carbon-rich particles in balanced distributions. Computer simulations confirmed this could transport microscopic material across vast distances, precisely what a biological seed object would require. Trajectory reconstruction suggests 3i Atlas may have originated from Kepler 442's habitable zone, a system containing Earth analog candidates. The Mars encounter was historically unprecedented. For the first time, human instruments orbiting another planet recorded an interstellar visitor at close range. ExoMars stacked exposures to accumulate signal. Each frame revealed a pale nucleus trailing faint ejecta. Mars Express corroborated it. The data confirmed the object was pulsing, not randomly venting, a singular convergence, a traveler from beyond our star and the technology to observe it, intersecting with perfect geometry. The next 25 seconds will permanently alter how you interpret every future comet announcement from space agencies. A pattern materialized that resisted conventional interpretation. Brightness fluctuations occurred in an 11-hour cycle, precise as mechanical oscillation. Webb recorded light curves repeating like a cardiac rhythm either extraordinary rotational stability 
or internal processes emitting energy in synchronized intervals. Chile's Atacama Interferometer confirmed the identical 11-hour periodicity. Not stochastic, not disordered, deliberate. International collaboration reached unprecedented scope. China's Tianwen-1 verified the pulsed emissions. UAE's HOPE provided infrared spectral data. ESA maintained all telemetry open access, inviting global analysis. For the first time, interstellar object research transcended geopolitical boundaries. Hundreds of amateur facilities contributed tracking data, cross-referencing with Harvard, Caltech, and ESO. Right now, before we go further, there's something in the spectral data that changes how we interpret everything that came before. NASA's communication wasn't entirely absent. Preliminary reports indicated web spectral readings contained frequency distributions not readily explainable through natural cometary processes. The agency acknowledged Webb's light curve data, but provided minimal interpretation. Scientists noted energy signatures differing from typical cometary behavior. This marked the first substantive acknowledgement since data flow decreased, though it raised additional questions. Ava Loeb called for an international committee on interstellar objects, arguing transparency reveals truth while restriction breeds uncertainty. Public discourse transformed 3i Atlas into a symbol of open scientific inquiry versus institutional data management. Then ESA documented a final observation. The coma expanded dramatically, forming spiral geometry never cataloged in natural comets. Spectral analysis showed energy concentrations at the hydrogen line 1420 MHz recurring. Embedded in Mars Express telemetry, a faint signal characteristic appearing to originate from Earth's direction. Not instrument interference, not calibration artifact. A phenomenon requiring explanation. This final data point is why scientific consensus remains elusive on what we observed. 3i Atlas arrived from coordinates near an unexplained signal source, moved with precision defying statistical probability, and exhibited chemistry that blurs distinctions between natural debris and purposeful architecture. ESA provided transparent data access. NASA's information flow decreased without detailed explanation. One agency opened the archive, the other restricted access. Whether cosmic statistical outlier or deliberate construct traversing stellar distances, it forced humanity to confront an uncomfortable question. Are we observing the universe passively, or does observation flow in both directions? If this represents one traveler, how many others drift undetected in the dark between stars? When the next arrives, will we recognize the pattern, or will we categorize it as another anomaly and move on? The answer may already exist in the data. We simply need to recognize that what appeared impossible has become undeniable. 